welcome to Independent Green Party, Green Party, Green TV, the show that focuses on positive Green New Deal, eco jobs for the economy solutions, solar jobs, wind jobs, geothermal jobs, rail jobs, conservation jobs, efficiency jobs, and Independent Green Party and Green Party candidates. I'm Brooklyn Kinley, Independent Green Party candidate for Arlington County School Board. Green Party, Green TV, Positive Solutions, Solar Jobs, Wind Jobs, Geothermal Jobs, and Rail Jobs. We are honored to have with us on the show today one of the world's leading Green Party thinkers and writers, Ralph Fuchs, author of the new book, Green Growth, Smart Growth, A New Approach to Economics, Innovation and the Environment. The foreword is by Anthony Giddens of the London School of Economics. It's published by Anthem Press, Tej Sood Publisher. Mr. Sood, I apologize if I didn't pronounce your name correctly. Green Growth Smart Growth author Ralph Fuchs has written widely on environmental policy and political economy. Herr Fuchs is president of the Heinrich Baal Foundation. The foundation is an influential public policy organization advancing green visions and projects. Ralph Fuchs was a na national Green Party leader in Germany. He also served as a Green Party senator for environmental and urban development in the state of Bremen. Ralph Fuchs has written a tour de force. Green growth, smart growth is a clear, positive vision and a specific plan. Grow the green economy, save the planet, preserve the biosphere. Ralph Fuchs was born in 1951. He, he is he is married to the Green Party's Marie Louisa Beck, a member of the German Federal Legislature. They have two daughters. Folks studied social science, economy, and history. He was a student leader at the University of Heidelberg and Bremen. The author of the Green Growth, Smart Growth joined the Green Party in 1982. In 1985, Ralph Fuchs was elected to the state legislature in Bremen, elected 1989 National Green Party co-chair. From 1991 to 1995, Ralph Fuchs was a Green Party state senator and cabinet member in Bremen. Ralph Fuchs has led the Heinrich Baal Foundation since 1996. It is a great joy, a personal honor to welcome Ralph Fuchs to Green Party Green TV. Ralph, uh, thank you so much for joining us. I uh, thank you so much for joining us. I, I read your Green Growth, Smart Growth last weekend, and as I mentioned, it is absolutely a magnum opus, a magnum opus, a green masterwork. Before we discuss it, please permit us to. Uh, a moment of nostalgia, my friend. March 1983, the Green Party enters the German Green Federal Legislature. There is Petra Kelly, Major General Gert Bastian, famed attorney Otto Schilly, and your wife, Maria Louise Beck. It was a great beginning for the Green Party. Petra Kelly was an inspiration to all Greens, a nonviolence advocate, a prophet of peace. What is Petra Kelly's Green Party legacy, would you say, Mr. Fuchs? I think still they are the same basic values and basic aims the Greens are following since uh, their foundations in their early years. It's about uh, the environment, uh, saving our natural conditions of life. It's about human rights. It's about equality. It's about human dignity. And it's about uh, democracy and self-determination. But of course, over the years, over these decades, from 1979, 1980, when the Greens in Germany had been founded, uh, the Greens itself uh, made a transformation from a fundamental oppositional party to a more real policy party, 
being part of the German political fabric, being part of even of the German federal government. So it was a learning process, but I would say it's still continuing these very fundamental uh, ideas from the, the early beginning. Ralph, uh, shifting back now, uh, we're seeing pictures of the wonderful Patrick Kelly book that uh, the Heinrich Boll Foundation put together, and Lucas Beckman uh, recommended to me uh, uh, when I was at the Green Party uh, National Convention in Freiburg in 2010, a masterful book uh, in itself, and we keep uh, a copy on the coffee table at home, and it's always a pleasure. Uh, to pick it up from time to time and recall the great achievements of Patrick Kelly uh, and the Green, Green Party. I want to shift now, Ralph, to talking about your book, Green Growth, Smart Growth, Your Positive Vision for the Future. And as a German speaker, reader, and writer myself, and as somebody who has translated from German, from German to English, uh, I just want to compliment your translator. Rachel Harland did a masterful job uh, Ralph, you wrote a lovely dedication at the start of the book to your daughters uh, Clara and Charlotta, and you wrote, you will live it, you will live to see it, one way or the other. And also in your preface, <laughs> and this made me chuckle, you wrote a thank you to your wife, saying thank you for your patience. As a husband myself, uh, I'm always asking for my wife's patience. <laughs> yeah, writing a book is, uh, you know, to a certain extent, a very egoistic project. You are busy with yourself, you are busy with the book, and you are starting to neglect your family and your social relations. You need some patience and tolerance from your loved ones uh, to do such a work. Well, for all of us who uh, derive such great no joy and gain so much knowledge from your new book. Early quote from Frederick Wilhelm Nietzsche. There Nietzsche. Are, Nietzsche. 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 Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Nietzsche, Nietzsche. A great German philosopher. <laughs> he says, there are a thousand paths that have never yet been trodden, a thousand healths and hidden aisles of life. Even now, man and man's earth are unexhausted and undiscovered. Yeah, this great <laughs> idea that we still didn't discover all the potential of the earth system, that the earth is not a poor and scarce reality. It's, in the contrary, the, the earth system is extremely rich extremely inventive and there's a huge potential in evolution which we only started to discover and to use you know we are not at the end of cooperation between the human system and the earth system we are still in the beginning and the previous industrial system was a quite primitive form based on the exploration of natural resources and the future of our economy will be based on cooperation with nature. Great. Um, Anthony Giddens writes in the foreword to Green Growth, Smart Growth. This is utopian realism. Radical change is needed if growth is to be compatible with sustainability. And later, we know to minimize climate change, there must be a worldwide switch from fossil fuels to renewable energy, solar, solar wind, geothermal, rail. Ralph uh, Giddens, uh, the uh, professor from the London School of Economics, uses the example of smartphones in your introduction to describe how Africa, third world countries, what we used to call third world countries, uh, have leapfrogged technology-wise with the smartphone and avoiding the old infrastructure. Yeah. And that is an analogy that he mentions that we could do the same thing. Uh, yeah, with it's, it, this is one of the fundamental arguments of the book, that we are in between, in the midst of a stormy process of industrialization of the former third world. 
of Africa, Latin America, huge parts of Asia, which already are now in uh, this process of industrialization. And that these billions of people now entering the industrial world will not need to repeat the way that Europe and the US and Japan have been going over the last century, that they have the opportunity to leapfrog from the fossil energy system to a new energy system based on renewables and a high degree of efficiency. And at the same time, it's an obligation of the old industrial world in Europe and the United States to prove that it is possible to decouple economic growth and social welfare from natural consumption, from degradation of our environment. We have to be the showcase for these new industrial nations that another path of development is possible. Ralph, you talk about in your new book, Green Growth, Smart Growth, from Anthem Publishers. Uh, it's available, folks, if you want to buy it. Uh, you talk about the green industrial revolution. What are the key elements of a green industrial revolution? There are three basic or key elements of this kind of, of revolution. First, we already started talking about switching from fossil fuels from oil, coal, and in the medium perspective also from gas to wind, solar, geothermal, bioenergies, so to renewable energies. Uh, the second revolution is a revolution in efficiency, no longer wasting scarce natural resources, minerals, uh, but to a kind of uh, high efficiency economy. Uh, and the third part of it is uh, moving towards uh, zero waste economy, a kind of cycling economy in which every residual material is becoming a starting point of a new value chain. So an economy without waste. And these basic principles uh, will lead us to another reality yes. in which uh, the human economy is no longer in contradiction with our natural environmental system. Ralph, one of the things that I thought was so phenomenal about uh, green growth, smart growth, is the precision of the language and even the poetry of the language. For example, you write there, greater prosperity from fewer resources, integrated value change, value chains Chains. whose waste produces products are fed back into the biological and industrial cycles. Uh, You talk about in the book the, uh, the ant, a- as an example, occurring in the natural environment where we can follow their example and utilize all of our resources. Uh, could you so go into more this, detail on this, this example of the ants is just an illustration that environmental degradation and climate change is not just a matter of quantity. It's a matter of quality. The biological mass of the ants on, on the Earth system would equivalent to, to about 30 billion people on the Earth. And nobody ever heard about that this mass of ants is a kind of environmental problem. Why? Because they are living within environmental cycles. Now, they don't produce any waste. They are just using the Uh, natural materials, and uh, they are moving within these kind of environmental um, world uh, to to improve it and not to uh, destroy it or to to, to degrade it. 
Ralph Fuchs talking about his uh, new book, Green Growth, Smart Growth. Now, for some people of a certain generation uh, in the United States, in America, Ralph, they remember the bionic man, <laughs> uh, the, the uh, popular television show with Lee Majors, and you write about the synthesis of biology and technology, bionics, in your forward-looking book. Bionics? Are we all going to be bionic men, Ralph, or are you talking about <laughs> something else? So bionics is just another metaphor for learning from nature. So. Um, the idea is that uh, we could make use of these richness of inventions of the natural evolution for human and, techno and technological purposes. Fantastic. Uh, you also get into in the book uh, the problem of the warming climate, obviously, and the difficulty of losing vegetation. Now, the term you use in uh, green growth, smart growth, is recultivation, large-scale reforestation, and conversion of degraded soil into fertile, fertile arable land. And I keep referring, uh, looking down and referring to the exact text in the book because it is uh, so perfect, so precise. Uh, describe, if you would, uh, Ralph Folks, author of Green Growth, Smart Growth, uh, more about how we can stop this uh, desertification uh, of so many areas. What comes to mind, obviously, is North Africa. So the, the loss of fertile soil is uh, one of the major ecological problems, maybe uh, together with climate change, the most uh, pressing and the most urgent uh, problem given uh, the growth of the world population from now maybe 7 billion to 9 to 10 billion until the midst of our century. So there will be growing demand for agricultural products, growing demand for food. At the same time, uh, there will be growing competition between agriculture and using um, crops for energy or industrial uh, purposes. So we have to extend arable land. We have to regain soil. Um, for instance, by uh, desalination based on uh, photovoltaics um, and greening the desert again making it uh, arable land. So regaining soil is one of the, the most important challenges for the next decades. But at the same time, there are other opportunities uh, to increase our food production. It starts with diminishing the loss of uh, agricultural uh, goods from harvest to the consumer, now we are losing between 30 to 50 percent of uh, agricultural production. Wow. We can reduce that. Um, we can gain more uh, calories by a uh, more vegetarian uh, kind of uh, uh, food consumption. So I'm, I'm quite optimistic. Uh, that we can feed 10 billion people and more uh, in the future if we change our agricultural system and the way we are dealing uh, with uh, food. Well, there's folks. fantastic to, to, to add that there's a fantastic new development going on that's um, urban agriculture, food production in cities, in vertical greenhouses in green skyscrapers. Uh, this is a very prom a very promising development. It will not only deliver fresh food to urban dwellers, but it will create a lot of urban jobs. Uh, very important, especially for the fast growing cities in the developing countries. Uh, the Independent Green Party's uh, Brooklyn Kenley has a question for you now. Ralph, um, would you mind explaining a little bit more about the agricultural greening? About the agricultural? Greening, greening yes. Greening, greening of the, the 
Okay, it's, I would say uh, it's about a combination of biofarming and uh, high technology. Uh, the, the current agricultural system is not sustainable at all. It has a huge uh, consumption and a huge waste of water. It needs a lot of industrial, of chemical fertilizers, and it's contributing to the loss of uh, fertile soil, especially if you're looking to the agricultural system in the, the German, uh, in, in the uh, United States, uh, Midwest, you can see all these negative uh, consequences of the industrialized farming system. So we need um, a new kind of uh, agriculture oh. in the very sense of the word, right. um, going back to biological uh, methods of uh, production in combination with a new uh, scientific-based uh, methodologies to increase productivity of our agricultural system. Ralph Folks, the author of Green Growth, Smart Growth on Independent Green Party, Green Party, Green TV today with us. Uh, Ralph, thank you so much for being here. I know that uh, Brooklyn Kinley has a, a quote she wants to read from, I guess it's Klaus Toffler, who <laughs> wrote about your optimism in Green Growth, Smart Growth. He lays out how, even in a world of nine billion people, prosperity and peaceful coexistence are still possible. Yeah, you know, over the last years, we told the world a lot of stories about the future we want to avoid. But now we have to tell the story of the future we want to achieve. You talk about sustainable mobility. Now, a big thing that the Independent Green Party has advocated for in Virginia and across the United States is rail. Of course, rail in Germany uh, makes money. Uh, the Bundesbahn um, wow. makes a profit, and of course, it's a, anybody who's written it knows what an outstanding product is produced there. Could you talk more about sustainable mobility, Ralph? Uh, bikes, of course. Uh, I'm an independent uh, candidate in a nonpartisan race in a nonpartisan election this year for Fairfax County Board of Supervisors in Braddock District. The thing I advocate for is bringing bike share uh, to Braddock, M more use of bikes, bike lanes. So is that the sustainability you're talking about in Green Growth, Smart it's Growth? Part of, yeah. It's part of, of course, our city is have to become less dependent from cars and, and car traffic, um, not only because of environmental reasons, um, but also because of the urban quality of life. You know, we have to regain public space from the car system, reducing the, the space for highways and uh, um, Great. <laughs> uh, in, 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 in cities and uh, transforming them into space for walking and bicycling. But it's only one part of the story. The other part is a very effective, attractive, modern public transport system. Uh, and the third part is making the car itself more environmentally friendly moving to electrical cars, battery driven, um, or driven by fuel or driven by fuel cells. Uh, so CO2 neutral cars is uh, part of the answer to the, the challenge of growing mobility. We have to have no illusion that mobility is a, a growing factor in the world. There are billions of people now just discovering modern mobility in, in Africa, in Latin America, and in Asia. Uh, so we have to reinvent the whole mobility system, including um, air transport, you know, uh, air system based on uh, aircraft based on biofuels, uh, on wind turbines, and on, on battery uh, energy, so, so e-mobility. So it's also an issue 
uh, for in for innovation in the the, the aircraft industry. Regarding building construction, what in your own words is environmental friendly building construction? Um, it's uh, not just a uh, scientific vision, it's uh, also within the range of our land possibilities to build houses which are producing more energy than they are, than they are consuming, uh, to have um, water, close water cycles uh, in city, to reduce waste. Uh, there are a lot of uh, very ambitious uh, uh, targets and programs in cities. For instance, Copenhagen um, is aiming to become CO2 neutral until 2020, uh, and they are on a very good way to achieve that uh, goal. Uh, but also the United States, for instance, in San Francisco, or Denver, you have a lot of positive examples that cities are becoming pioneers in that kind of green transformation. And it's not uh, to uh, go back from a modern urban life to um, kind of uh, village life. No, it's uh, about a new kind of urban modernity and architecture plays a, a key role in, in that transformation. For instance, solar arch architecture, creating buildings uh, which are using solar energy um, as the main source of their, their energy uh, consumption. Uh, this is a, a big story already uh, on the way. <laughs> You're watching Green TV, Independent Green Party, Green Party, Green TV. Our guest today, Ralph Fuchs, the author of Green Growth, Smart Growth. It's available through Anthem Publishing. Uh, I read it last weekend and loved it.